Welcome everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining our Fall 2020 student group meet and greet. I'm Kelly Roisman. I'm an event coordinator for the ALA student chapter. We also have representatives from all eight of our iSchool student groups who will be sharing information about their organizations. We'll talk about who we are, what we do, and how to get involved. We are all part of the iSchool community. And even if you're outside of California, no matter where we live, and that's what makes our program so special, but it's also what makes our student group so special. Uh, student groups give you an opportunity to expand your professional network, and they also help you make personal connections with other students. This is especially important when you're part of a distance learning program. Just knowing we're not alone, we're in virtual space, but there are people uh, like you when we share the same interests. So I wanted to go uh, briefly and, and just share with you some of the upcoming events that we have. And they're great opportunities for professional development. You can learn about issues in the LIS field and network with professionals, faculty, and other iSchool students. Uh, to keep up with what's happening, uh, you can visit the iSchool Master Calendar and a lot of the events were, are also going to show up on your Canvas uh, dashboard. So just a few of the events coming up. We have the diversity webinar series. Uh, this has been going on for some time. Uh, all of the past events are recorded. You can access those. And we also have uh, SJSU uh, each year has a campus reading program. Uh, this year's choice of book is What the Eyes Don't See, and it's the personal story of Dr. Mona. She was the pediatrician who exposed the Flint water crisis, and she's giving a talk on September 16th. I also wanted to share with you a little more about Library 2.0. For the past 10 years, the iSchool has sponsored virtual conferences with participants from all around the world. And due to the pandemic, many conferences now uh, have gone virtual in the past few months. Uh, Library 2.0 conferences have always been virtual and have in fact now served as a model for how to successfully hold online uh, conferences. They're designed to foster collaboration and knowledge sharing among information professionals worldwide. And each uh, half day mini conference has a specific theme. In March, we had wholehearted libraries, and in June, we had small and independent and rural uh, libraries. Coming up in October, uh, we have libraries and sustainability. I want to encourage you to attend and let you know that uh, this can be used as evidence in your e-portfolio. Uh, one thing you can do is write a blog post about the conference afterwards. Uh, the ePortfolio has Core Competency O, which is understanding global perspectives on effective information practices that are supportive of cultural, economic, educational, or social well-being. I'm going to, when I stop speaking, I'm going to be pasting some links into the chat box so you can access that. So why volunteer? Uh, we hope that you will consider getting actively involved. You can plug into a lot of energy with students who share your enthusiasm and passion. A student leadership is a great way to demonstrate to employers that you've had hands-on experience in addition to your coursework. It can also be used as evidence for your e-portfolio. For example, Core Competency M is demonstrating professional leadership and communication skills. Uh, Melissa Ward graduated from the iSchool in 2018 and now works at Blizzard Entertainment. While she was at the iSchool, she was chair of the ALA student chapter. This experience boosted her professional opportunities, and I hope your involvement will too. Also, I want to add that um, you're not limited to joining a single organization. I recommend following and participating in the activities of all the groups you're interested in. Uh, there's a great deal of overlap between them. Also, when you're in Information 200, you can get a free membership to a professional association. Uh, this can be one of our student group parent organizations. 
So before we get started, another reminder, keep your audio and video turned off, uh, type questions into the chat. And after the presentation, uh, we will have a question and answer session. And each uh, student group will have its own breakout room meeting via Zoom. Uh, we will give you uh, the information on that. We'll be providing a link to a Google Doc that has a list of the groups uh, with the Zoom links and passwords. So you can uh, join any group you wish uh, for a post-presentation meeting. And if you do have any questions as we go along, uh, go ahead, type that into the chat. So now I'd like to introduce Natasha Finnegan, and she is the chair of the ALASC. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. All right, good. Um, I'm Natasha Finnegan, the chair of SJSU's iSchool's American Library Association student chapter, also known as the ALASC. Um, our mission is to foster community and connection across all career pathways within the iSchool. And I have some great news for you. If you're in SJSU iSchool, you are automatically a member of the ALASC. So welcome. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so what is the ALASC? Uh, we are your connection between the professional world of information professionals and what you learn in the iSchool. With the ALASC, you uh, can keep your fingers on the pulse of the library world and participate in and create a lively iSchool community and also have fun. Uh, through your participation, you have opportunities to build your e-portfolio and form a great networking base and join a team that advocates uh, for the future of libraries and information freedom. Next. Thank you. Um, this is our executive board for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, we're working hard to provide you with interesting events and be your portal to current information direct from the ALA and its affiliations. Our elections are in the spring semester and we definitely welcome new and diverse voices. Um, joining the board has the material benefit of adding to your e-portfolio, especially core competency M, which is demonstrate professional leadership and communication skills, and core competency D, apply the fundamental principles of planning, management, marketing, and advocacy. Uh, opportunities for professional development are there too. ALASC pays uh, for um, our leadership team to attend the ALA conference every year. This year we went to the virtual one and we all got to go, which was pretty excellent. <laughs> Next. All right, so our events and activities that are coming up, we have some great events I'm really excited for. Our Van Books uh, quiz show is on September 29th. It will be a trivia extravaganza to celebrate the Van Books Week. Uh, join us for fun and prizes. We're giving out Starbucks gift cards to the top winners. All iSchool students are welcome, of course, to attend. And uh, please check out our website for information on how to register for the virtual event via Zoom. Uh, during the whole week, we are having a band book, uh, hashtag Shelfie, S-H-E-L-F-I-E, -E, um, where you take pictures of your bookshelf and share them with us um, on our Twitter or Facebook page, and you find out which ones have been challenged or banned. We can't wait to see your books. <laughs> For our ALA panel discussion, we're really excited and thrilled to have the iSchool faculty member and ALA president-elect Patty Wong uh, as our keynote speaker. The panel uh, includes representatives from various ALA roundtable committees and the date will be announced soon, but it is this fall, so keep an eye out. Um, a very popular recurring event that we have is Connect Over Coffee. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet fellow students and have conversations about topical issues. This semester's theme is equity, 
diversity and inclusion. And don't forget a cup of your favorite beverage. I have mine right here. Cheers, everybody. Um, in the past, we've had many in-person events like meetups and site tours, and we hope to get those back up soon. Next. Thank you. Um, so you want to get involved? Yay. Um, join us at our events. You can also write a blog post to share what excites you. Um, you can volunteer or run for office and help steer the ALASC to what your vision is. Um, you can connect with fellow iSchool students and professionals in the field and above all have fun. As our event coordinator Elizabeth said, um, personally I liked being involved with the ALASC because of how it puts me in the way of information. I've read books I otherwise would not have read and have been exposed to new topics in the LIS profession previously unknown to me. It's a great way to see and hear what our peers and mentors are doing and to keep us connected even when we're all so far apart. <laughs> and I'm in Maryland, so I'm pretty far from SJSU. <laughs> um, next slide. Oh. And yeah. So come check out the ALASC on our blog, Facebook page, Twitter, and our other sites, and we can't wait to meet you. Thanks for listening, everybody. Okay, we are ready for a sixth. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm waiting for the slide. Thank you. So good evening, everyone. My name is Sylvia, and I'm currently serving as vice chair and webmaster for the SJSU Assist student chapter. So what is special about Assist professional organization and what set us apart from other MLIS organizations is that we focus on the, um, on the research and information technology and sciences. Members that form part um, of our international organization of ASSIST are professionals in the field of science, technology, and research. One of the projects that ASSIST is currently collaborating with other organizations is the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative, supporting innovation of the metadata design and best practices. Next slide. So the ASSIST student chapter provides you with opportunity to support your professional growth and career development. Our executive committee, we have Lauren, Brickley, and myself serving um, uh, multiple roles. So far, having a very exciting, rewarding experience preparing for what we have in store for the year. Our faculty advisor, um, most of you know, is Dr. Sandra Hirsch, who was president of the professional organization of ASSIST in 2015. Okay, next slide. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany and I am currently serving as the um, assist secretary treasurer and the social media coordinator. And our chapter is affiliated with the international assist organization. So to join, you'll get the professional student membership. The student membership fee is a discounted rate of $45 annually, but you can get one year complimentary with your info 200 class. So something to consider if you're interested in, um, in joining us. By joining the ASSIST Association, you get access to lots of helpful resources, especially within the realm of networking with established info professionals and opportunities to get your work published. We really want to emphasize that with or without the professional membership, you can still join our events and get involved with us, and we would like to encourage that. So if you're interested in getting invited to these events, please reach out. Next slide, please. Hi, my name's Lauren, <laughs> and I'm the interim program director. What makes our organization different is how specialized our programming is. Some examples of events we've had in the past revolve around webinars, such as DAM and metadata. The iSchool offers many classes that students may be interested in, but may not be able to take a whole class on because they can't, it, they run out of time or they can't afford it. So a lot of times events in organizations, is, including ours, create events that can cater to interests that you may not be able to take whole classes on. Next slide, please. 
events that we are planning for the future involve how technology has been a big influence on what's happening now, how social media has helped with, inf with misinformation or advocacy, how, um, and how uh, we've also want to do things like watching movies together on Canopy because we want to learn, but we also want to have fun. We've created a Google event and the link is here, but I'll put it in the chat and I'll also put it in our breakout room. And because we really want to cater the events to the members in the organization. So this Google form will help us to see what you're interested in, what you'd be interested in learning about. And so we can create events for you. Next slide. And if you want to join our chapter, um, we would love to have you on our team and um, we welcome you to uh, apply and join us. We do have two current positions that are open on our executive committee. Uh, we're looking for a programming director and membership director. So if you're interested in a leadership role, uh, please join us in our breakout session after this where, where we'll talk about these positions in more detail. And why should you join our, our um, chapter? Some of the key benefits really lie in networking, learning about potential career opportunities, and new research methods. We'll talk about a lot more in detail about what some more benefits are and how to join, including the assist membership form. Uh, we'll paste that in the chat right now for you to have, but we'll also have that in our breakout session after. Um, we do have just a short period now, so we want to talk about this in way more detail in our breakout session. So if you're interested in learning more about ASSIST or joining or getting involved in any ways, please join us after and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. And yes, we will paste in the link uh, to, the uh, uh, to the document with the uh, links and passwords for each of the post-presentation breakout room meetings. And now we're introducing the first generation student group. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Alyssa Key and I am the current chair of the first generation student group. We are a relatively recent group here at the iSchool, um, if I'm not mistaken. It was started in the 2017-2018 school year, so we're still pretty um, new and for this school year we luckily have a very full leadership team we are currently still looking for a blog editor so if you are interested in that position feel free to reach out to us at the email listed here on the slide um, we also have a very full website and blog you can check out and um, we are really open to connecting with you. Uh, so next slide, please. Hey everyone, um, I'm Jessica and I'm currently the webmaster for the group. A little bit about us, um, we're a group of graduate students with many shared experiences um, due to being the first in our families to go to graduate school. Um, we aim to provide a place to network and uh, get support as we navigate graduate school and establish our professional careers. Um, we are an inclusive group though, so if you don't fit the typical definition of a first generation student, but you feel like you have a lot of similar experiences, you're certainly welcome to join our group. Um, next slide, please. So we have a couple of main types of events, um, the general meeting and the coffee and chat. The general meeting is typically a little more formal and we usually have an interview of a faculty member about their experience as a first generation student. Um, this spring on March 19th, we actually had our general meeting and had an interview with um, Dr. San Nicolas Roca and it was a really great discussion. You can actually find it um, recording on our website under the interviews tab. Um, this summer on July 23rd, we had a coffee and chat which is typically less formal. Um, in the summer, we talked about COVID-19 and its impacts on us as students and professionals um, and just really anything else that came up in conversation. Um, if that sounds interesting to you, we do actually have both of those types of meeting coming up this fall. Um, the general meeting is October 8th 
at 6 p.m. PST. And then we also have a coffee and chat on November 12th at 3 p.m. PST. Um, there will be more information about them on our website and also eventually in um, upcoming iSchool alerts. Next slide, please. So like I already mentioned, um, that we currently have an opening on our leadership team for our blog editor position. More information is available at our leadership team page on our website. And our, school, our student group is free to join via the membership link on our website or via the contact link on our website. And it is open to everyone who wishes to participate in the student group that is interested in learning about more and sharing perspective on the first generation student experience. Since being a first generation student, especially in grad school is often incredibly difficult. It's, we strive to provide community to everyone, a sense of community to everyone um, who is seeking it out because being in an online environment for schooling, it, it can be very hard. And so having community, it can help make things a little bit easier uh, because we can all um, connect with each other and share our experiences and find that common ground. That's often so important, especially in grad school. Um, also, um, we are looking for students to submit guest posts to the blog over the course of the upcoming school year. So feel free to, re feel free to reach out. Um, even if you're not interested in maybe pursuing the blog editor position, you can always write a post or more uh, for our blog and we'll post it and uh, give you credit and you can actually use that for your eport um, depending on the content you focus on. Uh, we're looking for at least 300 words. Uh, it's not something that's as long as any of the papers we all have to write for our classes so uh, feel free to email us if you have any questions. And next slide please. So we, we have multiple ways uh, that everyone can connect with us. Uh, we do have a Facebook group and a LinkedIn group. And uh, you can also tweet at us at Twitter. Um, and we, you can also uh, reach out to us on our blog and through our email. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot. And yes, we do have that uh, document with the links and passwords. And we'll make sure you have that. And now introducing Reforma. Do we have our, our speaker for Reforma oh. here? Saludos, greetings Spartans. Sorry about that, I was still muted. My name is Rosa Conrad, the president of SJSU Reforma Student and Alumni Group. Here with me today is our secretary, Sofia La Monica, who will be joining me and presenting information about our newly found group. We are so excited to be here this evening with all of you. Um, Reforma SJSU High School Student and Alumni Group is part of Reforma National, an organization that promotes library information services to Latinos and the Spanish speaking, who is also affiliated with the American Library Association. Reforma focuses on recruiting bilingual and bicultural library professionals and support staff. Our group's focus is on developing students' professional skills and increasing awareness of library and information services to Latinos by providing learning experiences through collaborations, networking, and professional development. We offer members a supportive community that will help them grow into culturally competent information professionals during and after their academic journey. Sophia will be providing more information on our group's goals, but first she will introduce you to the executive board. Thank you, Rosa. Um, you've all met now Rosa. She's our president, Rosa Conrad, and I am the secretary and treasurer, Sophia La Monica. And we have uh, Vice President Essie Barroso Ramirez. The faculty advisor is Dr. Michelle Villagran. If you don't know her, you might encounter her. She's also teaching courses at the iSchool. Our webmasters are Alessandra Gonzalez and Renee Torres. And our alumni liaison is Petri Sáenz. And John Aguilar Villanueva is the marketing and social media liaison. Okay, next slide. I think I got everybody. 
Okay, um, so these are our group's goals, but first I just want to reiterate that student groups, uh, Reforma student groups are an initiative endorsed by Reforma National and overseen by the Reforma Education Committee. And our goals are to create a welcoming and inclusive environment, advocate the needs and interests of multicultural iSchool students and alumni, develop communication and collaboration between members and other SJSU iSchool student organizations, establish a community for student and alumni learning and development, identify resources, toolkits, workshops, and conferences in order to serve Spanish-speaking and Latinx communities, and engage with Reforma National and Reforma chapters for professional networking and collaborations. Um, next slide. So this year we have planned a series of cafecito con, which means coffee with, and we invite you to join us for our series. And um, next slide again. Sorry about that. Got it? Yes, that's it. Um, so iSchool students and alumni interested in working with Spanish speakers and Latinos are welcome to join Reforma SJSU iSchool student group. Um, students and alumni first need to join Reforma National, the National Association, and the cost to join Reforma National is $10 per year for students. And after joining Reforma National, you can complete the Reforma SJSU iSchool student group form and you will receive an email welcoming you to Reforma SJSU iSchool student group confirming your membership. Um, next slide. And we have many ways for you to get involved. You can submit a post for our blog, attend our Cafecito series. Um, the first one's coming up on September 8th and other virtual events and activities that are going to be on our website calendar. Um, attend our monthly general meetings, suggest ideas for an event or activity or resources for our iSchool students using our comment form on our website, and join the executive committee. And we offer opportunities to meet iSchool students and alumni, network with other Reforma members, librarians, and library professionals, um, opportunities for professional development, developing leadership skills, and you can learn about resources, conferences, and scholarships at our meetings as well. Um, next slide. So these um, are ways that you can connect with us. We do have an email where you can just email any questions. Um, you can also catch us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And please make sure that visit, you can visit our websites just to find a little bit more about who we are. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And we will have that Zoom meeting afterwards. You'll be able to uh, ask more questions then. And now we're introducing the uh, student chapter of the Society of American Archivists. Hi everyone, my name is Allison and I'm excited to talk to you about the Society of American Archivists student chapter. Also here from the planning team are Barbara, Jenny, and Stacy. So feel free to find them in the chat log and um, ask them questions. So if you're not familiar with archives, an archive is any record of any activity. It can take many shapes and forms. It's not just old books and letters. Archives are basically anything that have continuing value. Could it, it could be for an organization, an individual, or a community. And there are many exciting developments and issues being addressed in archives these days. And a lot of crossover with the other LIS disciplines. And you'll hear us mention things that a lot of the other student groups are mentioning. Next slide. So, oh, you skipped one. Or did I lose a slide? <laughs> maybe. Do you want me to? Uh, maybe I guess we it? lost. All right. So go back to the, the um, first slide. Okay. Um, so basically what we do is we promote archival interests and awareness. And we do that in a few different ways. And the first one is with our um, student publication, Archeota, which happens to be run by our host, Kelly Roisman. And we also have a multiple social media channels for discussing news, issues, and events. Uh, we just relaunched our website, and it includes a blog for discussing issues. And of course, we have Canvas boards, which are another area where you can post um, questions, ideas, just chat with people. In addition to communicating, we plan events. Uh, we offer multiple resources for education and career development, but as you've heard, this message throughout the presentation. We most importantly, we provide a network for you to share and learn about archives from your fellow students and the larger archival community. Next slide. 
Oops, sorry. So everyone loves events. Yeah. And we've had some great ones in the past that you can um, see on this slide. We're currently working on our fall events and we're actually about to post some information in the next couple weeks about two events that'll be coming up. And the first one is with the uh, archivist and curator of the Oregon State University Hops and Brewing Collection. And the second is with the historian and archivist at Levi Strauss. So stay tuned for more details on those. Next slide. So there are a lot of great reasons you should join us, but again, one of the best ones is networking and making connections, especially if you're still trying to decide on your career pathway. It's great to sort of pick people's brains, ask about classes. Um, you might even hear about your dream job. And I also wanna mention that our faculty advisor, Lori Lindbergh, is a great resource with amazing experience. She's been recognized by the SAA twice for her contributions, and she's actually one of the people responsible for creating the MARA program. And lastly, you can, as you can see, it's super easy. Just find us in the groups tab on Canvas and click join. Next slide. All right, so you're excited. You wanna get involved. We're looking for a vice chair. Join us. Too much? Then just submit an article to Archeo to help with events. I get it, toe dip. Just send us ideas for events or blog posts, share news and information that you've uh, heard about archives, whatever you wanna do just to kind of participate, stay involved. There's a lot of different ways you can um, be part of the group. Next slide. You may be wondering if you have to join SAA, the answer is our parent organization. The answer is technically no, but if you want to run for a student chapter position or vote in student chapter elections, join a committee, et cetera, you do also have to be a member of SAA. You don't have to be a member to attend our events or submit stories and ideas or network, uh, but there are many great benefits to joining SAA, especially if you have any interest in archives. There's a mentoring program that will match you with a professional member in your area of interest there are over 40 different discussion boards focused on specific collecting areas, specialties, and different types of archival work. And it's only $55 a year if you don't choose it as your free um, membership in Info 200. Next slide. And this is just a quick snapshot of our team. Reach out to us anytime. Like I said, if you wanna pick, pick our brains, give us feedback or just chat, we are here for you. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, names that are uh, familiar to you already, um, just kind of reinforcing the fact that you should join as many groups as you are interested in. Next slide. So that's it. We hope to see you in the breakout Zoom meeting later. Um, Barbara, Jenny, Stacy will be there to answer your questions along with myself. You're also invited to join us at our annual member get together on September 15th. We've got more information on our website. You don't have to be a member to join that. If you just want to get more information about what we're about, join us. And don't forget to check out our website for updates on events. And the rest is just all the different ways you can stay in touch with us. So thank you again for listening. Thanks, Allison. Okay, now we have our Special Library Association student chapter. Hey, and I'm another Allison. Um, so I'm Allison Gammons. I'm the social media director for the Special Library Association student chapter, or SLASIC. Um, I also have Kimberly Hale in here with me. She's our vice president. So the first question that comes up most of the time is what in the world are special libraries? And they're kind of amorphous. Uh, they take many forms. Um, and I've just listed a couple of the ones we've come across here. Uh, it could be a specialization within a public or academic library. It could be bookmobiles or some sort of mobile library. It could be something totally different. Came across a cool article about a sourdough library, a wine library, all sorts of things. So it's a really cool way to get an idea of some different kinds of things there are out there. Uh, next slide. Um, because special libraries are kind of amorphous, we recently adopted a mission statement to kind of help drive what we're doing, our social media, um, everything, where our programming, 
Um, and I'm not going to read it to you. You can read it if you want. But big key points of it is that we recognize that social, uh, special libraries hold a unique role and an important role in the library world. Um, we're focused on promoting diversity, inclusion, and connection among students and the larger special library uh, world. And the way we see ourselves doing this includes providing leadership opportunities, developing practical skills, and cultivating meaningful and lasting connections. Um, so next slide. And we have an exciting slate of programmers for the co uh, programs for the coming year. Um, these are the lineup, the lineup of speakers we have for this uh, fall. Um, one in particular, I want to point out John Luke, uh, who is, works for JPL NASA as a record management specialist. He was previously very involved in student leadership here at iSchool. I believe he helped uh, found the um, first generation student group. He was involved in the SLASC. He's been everywhere. Um, he's a really interesting guy. So he's going to be speaking on September 28th. Um, we have somebody uh, talking about uh, prison librarianship. We have career building. We have a wine librarian lined up at some point uh, in the future. So um, there's a lot of really interesting things. And we're also looking at some additional interactions, not just presentations, but other programming. Um, next slide. And in, in that vein for other programming, um, there are a lot of ways to get involved. And one of them is to share with us some programs that you'd potentially like to see us do. And uh, we have a link to a, a quick survey to fill out just some programs you'd like to see. And we want everybody to fill it out um, if you're part of SLASC or not. Um, you can share information with us about unique programs you've, or libraries you've seen. You could write for the SLASC blog. Um, you don't have to write a regular thing. You can just pitch an idea for a single blog post. You can suggest programs or speakers or things you'd like to see, uh, attend a program and event, engage with us on social media, or join the ex executive committee and help us run SLASIC. Next slide. And our executive committee is a pretty awesome and robust group. There are a lot of us. We've got a lot of different things going on. Um, we are currently seeking three roles. We're looking for assistant social media director, assistant archivist and a second assistant membership director. So there are definitely some places to step in, um, get a feel for what we have to, what we're doing, what we have to offer. And it's just a really fun group of people. Uh, next slide. So we welcome you to contact us. Of course, we will be having a breakout group at the end if you want more questions. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, email us, check out our website. You do not have to be a member of the um, Special Library Association to be involved in SLA or to hold leader or to be involved with SLASIC or hold leadership positions. So even if you're not part of the Special Library Association, you can still be fully involved with SLASIC. And that's it for us. Thank you so much. And now we are introducing the Student Research Journal. Hello. My name is Katherine Nelson, and I'm representing the Student Research Journal as the current editor-in-chief. Along with me tonight, I have Sarah Wilson, who is our managing editor, if you'd like to say hi. Hi, this is Sarah Wilson. Uh, this year, we have a full team. There is the editor-in-chief, the managing editor, four content editors, and two copy editors. Um, it is made up of this cluster each semester. Um, six of us are new and two are returning. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Anthony Bernier. Next slide, please. So the Student Research Journal is the only student-run academic journal that is double-blind, peer-reviewed, open access, that is run out of San Jose State University. While that is a mouthful, what it boils down to is that the SRJ works to not only get students published, but to get them through the peer review process early on in their academic careers. Next slide. Uh, while it is a presentation faux pas to read from the screen, I will be doing that just for this segment. So the SRJ focuses on fostering an engaged community of stakeholders, strengthening the SRJ's reputation and communicating the value and opportunity of the SRJ to potential audiences at San Jose State University and beyond supporting and growing the Student Research Journal with an effective editorial structure, 
and producing a rigorous scholarly journal which showcases excellent student scholarship in the field of library and information science at San Jose State University and beyond. Everything that we do fits into one of those categories. So how can you get involved? Um, while this is not a group that you can just join, there are two ways that you can get involved in the Student Research Journal. The first is to submit. I have the link being posted into chat. And that is going to lead you to the aims and scopes page of our website. Uh, on there, you can read the requirements for submitting submissions and what we accept, which is original research, critical essays, current academic book reviews of books published within the last three years, and evidence summaries covering library and information science related topics. If you are a current graduate student, which you all are, you can submit, even if you submit now and three years from now, you have not heard anything, you've graduated, and the Student Research Journal reaches out and says, hey, I would like to publish your, uh, your submission, that you can still publish. It could still be published as long as you submit while you are a student. So I highly encourage all of you, while you are graduate students, to submit any of your work that fits into the aims and scopes. Another way to get involved is to apply when there are vacancies on our editorial team. Right now we do have a full team, as I mentioned, but after each semester and especially each year, people graduate, students graduate, they move on and they can no longer be a part of the editorial team. So keep an eye open. I know that I will be leaving after next May. So there will be a vacancy for the editor in chief position at that time. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And now we have the Virtual Center for Archives and Records Administration. Welcome. Hey everyone, I'm Kenna. I'm here alone tonight representing Vicara. Um, we're a bit more of an information type group than an association with officers, which is why I'm here alone. Um, Vicara stands for the Virtual Center for Archives and Records Administration and is headed by Dr. Pat Franks, who you may know as the MARA Program Coordinator. Vicara is a MARA created space and community based in the virtual world of Second Life. Um, students, alumni, educators, and other professionals in the field are welcome to join Vicara and become a part of our community in Second Life. We discuss any and all aspects of information sciences, including archives, education, libraries, and more. Our home base is Second Life, but we do make a point to meet uh, in different virtual world platforms, such as Kitely, Allspace, Mozilla Hubs, um, as you can see here on the third Friday of each month. 2019, we focused on the year, uh, well, we dubbed it the year of uh, VR exploration and wrapped that up with a panel presentation as part of the Virtual World's Best Practices and Educations Conference in March. And continuing into 2020, we're focused on XR exploration. Mara is a great way to get connected and have a little fun in our program. I think somebody mentioned earlier that it's really important to get involved as um, iSchool students and being totally online. So Vicara is a great way to do that. Uh, with Zoom and other platforms blowing up due to the current environment with COVID-19, virtual worlds are becoming increasingly popular and joining Vicara would also be a great resume builder. So just something to keep in mind. Um, next slide, please. Uh, we have some different events going on. Um, you can explore in iSchool Island on Second Life. Um, and you can see here our upcoming event on October 24th is XR Bridging the Gaps. Um, more details will be displayed, so keep an eye on your email for that. Um, and I will paste into the chat um, our link, which will give you more information um, to the Vicara blog um, and getting started with us. So we hope to see you there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or contact Dr. Franks. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. That was great. Very informative. I really appreciate and thank you for coming tonight.